Hi, I'm Lauren Strand. Welcome to another episode of 365 Unplugged, and I'm joined as always by... Alistair Pugin, coming to you live from my studio, not in a car like Lorian. Um, that's the biggest I've seen his face on a screen ever. Um, I'm not too sure how I feel about it right now. There's a reason for that, and I'm on the gym to reduce the size of his face in general. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, so let's let's get into it so that I can actually start driving, because uh, I don't want to pay, play paper oxygen while driving. Um, so, look, my topic is revisiting Cortana with the recent news that Cortana is moving further to the back. Uh, what, what's your topic? So I want to talk about how Microsoft just kills off applications and sucks them into others. And I want to talk about shifts because I like shifts and it's kind of deploying over there. But I want to talk about how Starfire became shifts and how Skype became Teams. But more so on the staff upside. All right, cool. Let's paper, rock, scissors this so I can start driving. Right. Yeah. Yep. One. Yeah, one. Two. 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 Three. Right. All right. Rock beats paper. Shifts it is. What, what did you want to talk about? I about shifting my pants. What did you want to talk about? I can't remember. I just... No, no, you what won. So we're going to shift... Uh, what was your topic, though? About Cortana moving further to the back. Uh, well, my Cortana speaker sporadically loses Bluetooth. So right now, my Cortana speaker serves less than zero purpose. Anyhow, <laughs> no, it does. <laughs> it just stops so shit, halfway. Talk about it. Yes. So we've seen over the last two, three years, uh, it's weird that they didn't do anything with Yammer. That would have been great if they took Yammer and sucked it into another product. Um, <laughs> did I say that <laughs> out loud? Good. <laughs> so, two years ago at Ignite, not last year, the year before, Teams was the, the biggest thing to, to hit us. There was talk about the consolidate your file shares to OneDrive and, and all of these things. And then... Microsoft started releasing other applications. We saw a kiosk being real, uh, frontline or first line workers being a thing, and Microsoft introduced products like StarFub. And I really enjoyed StarFub. I, I did. I think there was a place for it. We started at the end of last year building integration into StarFub. What did Microsoft do? Oh, sorry. I don't think our top 100 enterprise customers like StarFub, so we're going to deprecate or depreciate or decommission the product, and we're going to give it a new name, call it Shifts, and pull it into Teams. Well, now, I think, look, I, I'm kind of, I was on the fence with StarFub because StarFub is, I think, to the day less than two years old. Um, and I saw its benefit, but I don't do a lot of work with, First-line workers, as Microsoft calls them, because if you look for the term first-line workers, it only comes up on Microsoft pages. Um, but it was I found it fascinating when there was one organization when I was talking to them about Watson 365 and I mentioned StarPub and I kind of gave it the, uh, look, you probably don't really have a purpose for this. And when I explained the features, I was like, oh, tell me more, tell me more. And I actually found since then a few more have become interested. But, yeah, it was a, it was a little bit fat, uh, frustrating that um, it's like, hey, let's deploy StarPub. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. No, no, it's going away now. You can't have it. But that's exactly my point, right? So I look at the developer ecosystem and because I, I work for a dev shop, I've got on average 65 developers writing code. That's what they do. They generate code. And we were talking about it this morning, actually, strangely enough, that if customers can't keep up, how do developers keep up? So I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, I deal a lot with, with insurance organizations, and Kaizala to StarFub is great. Because right. amazing APIs for Kaizala, amazing stuff into, uh, well, through the, through the Graph API, great. So we've got a real-world business case for building integration between Kaizala teams and StarFub. We, we've got a business okay. case, right? So now I get my developers to go off on a tangent and they go and <laughs> go off on a tangent, <laughs> go off on a tangent. 
but but this is a, a concern now, not only for our customers who, for those customers that have embraced Staff Hub, uh, what is the move now? Uh, is there, uh, are they going to Well, there is a, a migration plan. Well, sorry, there's a, there's a plan to plan. Um, on the, the kind of the product page, there's like an FAQ section where they do say that there is intent to do data migrations, but they don't speak about um, when it is. And look, I, I think, you know, as frustrating as it is, I think it's actually a necessary step because Staff Hub was one of those services that created its own group, but you couldn't create the group from anywhere else. To, to connect the Staff Hub, you had to create it from Staff Hub. Um, and it used the team chat service anyway. And initially when it was, when it was rolled out, you, you could use the chat service in Staff Hub, but if you added a team to that group, which you can do, you couldn't still chat with the people, even though it was the same chat service. Um, and how treated files are different from teams and those kind of things. So I think that just created confusion. That's one of the things that Microsoft has done, you know, honestly, quite well for the last probably four years is created confusion um, with all the different overlapping apps leading to the rise of so many what to use when guides and best practices and giving us reason to speak in public and create YouTube videos. Um, so now I think it's, a, I think Microsoft just went, Right, there's too many MVPs out there creating content. We need to cull down the application um, and yeah, shrink it, consolidate, converge, whatever you want to call it. Look, I like stuff. I like what it what it what it purports to do, and it's a space that, funnily enough, in South Africa, I've spoken to quite a few organisations that have temporary workers, and they don't really have something like Staff Hub. I mean, some of them have some weird applications. They've got a weird clock in, clock out, and someone bought some home-baked thing in, in Access years ago, and they still run it. But but for what Staff Hub does, and, and it feels like Microsoft creates a product from an idea, and it's great, and they've got a limited lifespan where if they don't get 100 customers that are using it prolifically, uh, they then move it. I understand why, and thank you for that very detailed explanation of what didn't work in Staff Hub and why Microsoft decided that they should, well, we go on your perception of why Microsoft decided to move it into <laughs> Teams, right? But look, I think it's a, I think it's a great, it's a great move. Um, except mine won't deploy. <laughs> Currently. So well, I think, look, shifts. It, it is a great move, and I think the reality is we'll probably see more people using it than alone with Staff Hub, um, because that's the thing is Staff Hub was a somewhat of an isolated application, um, and you know, being quite blunt about it, because this is what this is the purpose of the show. The way to get products to truly innovate and move forward is attach them to teams. Um, we've seen this with a number of products, and I dare not say their name for updating product managers where they kind of moved along and did some stuff, and now that they're connected with teams, there's a different expectation, there's a different demand placed upon them. Um, and so all of a sudden, they develop further. So I think Staff Hub was good. It sat on the fence for about, uh, sat on the shelf for about two years. Not a huge amount of, you know, new features added to it. So I think we'll probably see that change with Shift. Um, you know, now that it's part of teams, it's like we have to change. You can't be associated with teams and not innovate and iterate. But but I, I see value now. Now that you mentioned that, and and you you untapping quite a bit now. So no longer so in the old days, right? Staff up first line kiosk. Is it coming to enterprise? Yes, maybe no, maybe yes, and then then it came to enterprise, right? Yeah. And now it's shipping with teams. It's built into, it's baked into teams. You literally go click, deploy, select a team, and now you have a schedule. Now think about it this way. Not only are you going to want to use it for, um, for first line workers. So I, I run a, a retail store and I've got a chain of these across the country and now I can manage my temp workers coming in that work shifts, right? Because they're calling yep. it shifts. But I could use it for a team of developers that's working on a project that we've created a team for. Yeah. Well, 
I think the, the thing is people now need to look at where to put this in because I, I've thought about it as well. Like, yes, manage a team of developers, but for what purpose? Because you've already got um, kind of rostering in terms of deliverables with things like Planner uh, because it's a bad outcome. So where I see probably shifts being more useful is um, around things like, yes, you manage your team, but who is scheduled to be on support for this week for that team because the product is going live? So it's less, ama- less about a deliverable and more about availability. Um, uh, availability, And that's why I think that shifts can work for white-collar workers. Um, not not just blue-collar. Not just blue-collar. That's fine. That's fine. We, we don't differentiate, Al. <laughs> don't, don't be colorist. Uh, that that is that is rather 2019 of you, but yes. So there are more functions now that it's incorporated inside of Teams to just shift workers. Yep. Sorry, parking. So. I'll, I'll, are, are we giving shifts a thumbs up? Are we endorsing like we did last week? Are we endorsing the move from Staff Hub to to shifts? I mean, it's, it, we need to give it a stamp of approval. Um, yeah, because it all really comes down to us. That's all people care about when they watch these videos, and that's all Microsoft ultimately cares about. Um, look, I think we are giving it, um, I guess, what my personal thing is. Yes, it's a thumb of approval because now people will probably find it easier. Um, you know, and it's got more functionality. And there's also the the uh, the graph API integration that's coming as well. So I think these are all good things. What about and your to, tick? Does it have your tick of approval? I, I do, I do. Um, I look, I see real real world value for it. I mean, we've got now after what you've just said about project things, I have three business cases um, to go <laughs> to get to get my my dev guys um, right to go for. Uh, but you're 100% right. Teams is the platform for consuming services. Yeah. Okay, you want to drive yeah. adoption, go to the most, the fastest adopted, growing, pick a thing uh, product in the history of products from Microsoft. That's a claim to fame for Teams. It's a past SharePoint. And my only worry is, and my my condolences to anyone that's been writing user guides and manuals for Teams because now you have to update it. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> stamp of you never know, Maybe we'll for... see also uh, the resurgence of Geek Jam, speaking of products that were kind of introduced uh, right away. And, and Microsoft Kin, in lieu of them retiring <laughs> uh, Windows 10 mobile, you know? <laughs> well, but, but, hey, Windows 10. I, I, so the but now hold on, I have a question though because according to Vlad Katrinisko, there are two new well there's three exams new exams that are now in beta, and I think it runs till the beginning of Feb. So it's a 300 and 301. There's a teamwork exam, and there's a SharePoint exam, right? Okay. If shifts is moving into teams, that means that the objective domains of the teamwork exam has to be updated to include shifts. Well, this is one of the challenges with doing exams uh, on cloud services. And I, I wrote a blog about this ages ago when doing the 365 beta exams um, was, you know, you'd go in, you'd do the assessment. It says, what are the minimum requirements for this? You say, as of when? Or what features are included? Yeah. It was all yeah. as of when because sorry, the product changed last week. The well, it's the same with it's the same with all the admin centers, right? So yeah. when these exams were put together, every admin center that was in preview, and there was probably three of them, you could not test on that. But the admin centers are generally available now. So is the point that we're making here, you're fine to deploy, sh- to deploy shifts, but don't get certified on it yet because things change. Well, so what if someone writes... You can't prove your knowledge. Well, yeah, we're going to have to measure it. When did you write the exam? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, on that All note, right. we're heading off topic, and I've arrived at the swimming pool, and people are thinking, why is he sitting here just talking? All right. 
So my phone doesn't go underwater. Next time I'll do this with a GoPro and a mic under. under see me swim. Yeah. Anyway. I, All right, I let's will, wrap I it will, up there. I will, guys. All right, great. Thank you very much. We have approved shifts. It gets our stamp of approval. We are endorsing shifts. Thank you, Microsoft. Get out there and use it, and thanks, everyone, for watching. Ciao, ciao.